April 30th. So tomorrow was supposed to be the day that Vegas kind of starts to reopen. But we got the unfortunate news once again. The Governor Sislek has extended the stay-at-home order till May 15th now. So another 15 days to tack on to the 45 days. Which I have no idea why, because other states are reopening. Um, construction has continued this entire time. The Raiders Stadium is almost complete. Same with uh, Resort World. They've been flying through, even though eight workers tested positive at the Raiders Stadium. And I don't know how many at the Resort World, but quite a few, at least five, I heard. Um, and now Governor Sislek says that uh, he didn't get the numbers he wanted for whatever numbers he's even talking about. I don't know, because there haven't been that many deaths. Uh, there's been the regular flu virus. Number, so if anything, he's mad. Probably there isn't enough deaths. All he said is, we didn't reach what we were wanting, so we're going to extend for longer. I mean, I don't even know what they were trying to reach and um, why uh, Nevada is still going to be shut down. Because people here are starting to protest. Everyone wants to get back to work. The kids want to get back to school. And Governor Sislek is continuing this nonsense. People are starting to protest. You guys, there's going to be no jobs left in Nevada once this is over. Because most of the casinos cannot open. They cannot afford to open. They're either going to go out of business. They're going to change hands. Some of them are already starting to declare bankruptcy. Thinking about it. Um, there's some airlines already declaring bankruptcy. This is a mess, you guys. The airlines are really screwed, especially the ones that were coming to Vegas. Um, and those ones, you know, were coming. We had so many flights coming every single day. And now there's like, shh, I don't even know, a couple a day, maybe. I, it's such a small amount. We can tell um, because the planes go right over where we live. And it used to be just nonstop. We go out there, we'll be like lucky to see one plane if we're out there for several hours. I mean, it's insane. Jay wants to know about the homeless. How's the homeless situation? Here? The homeless situation is getting really bad. Actually, it's starting to get worse because some people yeah. are already losing their homes. Even though you're not supposed to be evicted, the thing is take that up with uh, each individual landlord. Some landlords are uh, kicking people out, putting their stuff on the front yard and locking them out. Some businesses are doing that where they're taking all the people's stuff. Like if they had a lease, putting it out on the front. It's like, fine don't pay but we'll put all your stuff outside and either you come get it or someone's going to steal it um, people um, some landlords are taking out appliances from the tenants so like yeah you don't pay but now you don't have a refrigerator uh, yeah. oven uh, you know anything they can take out of there you know, AC whatever so um, yeah there are laws but um, it doesn't mean that your individual landlord is going to abide by them. And when it's you and them and they wow. kick you out and put all your... So that's happening here. Uh, we're seeing more homeless people. Um, uh, the crime is starting to uh, rise because people are running out of money. So you can already just feel that energy of like... At first, everyone was kind of like helping. Like, what and state like, is this happening in? Nevada. We're in Nevada, and this is Las Vegas. And what happened is, because Governor Sislek here um, shut down Las Vegas and all of Nevada for 45 days, and now he's extending it for 15 more days. Um, and the thing is, he shut down all hotels, all casinos, um, everything except for construction he allowed, which makes no sense. If there was a deadly virus, tell me why construction can't wait a month or two if it was really a deadly virus. But no, he allowed construction to continue. All the construction projects are flying. They're building new hotels, building new casinos, which makes no sense, building new stadiums, since we have no tourists. It makes no sense. So the fact he allowed construction proves he knew it was not a deadly virus. And you say, what? It is not a deadly virus. It is a regular flu virus. You guys, here is the difference between a deadly virus and a regular flu virus. If a virus is killing more people than the number of recoveries, that would make it a deadly virus. Do you understand the difference? Every virus kills people. Every virus kills people. That does not make it a deadly virus. A deadly virus would imply that more people are dying than surviving. Right, and, the and that people that out. get it, that are healthy, that are dying. Now, I keep hearing these couple of cases where they say some healthy individual got it and died. For one thing, I'd like to look into that person's medical history. And what is your definition of healthy? For one thing, are they overweight? 
Are they smokers? Are they drinkers? Are they all these? Are they eating way too much sugar? What are the things of where they say healthy? Oh, this healthy 17 year old. For one thing, the virus kills people that are unhealthy. So if anyone died, I would really question their level of healthiness. What is healthy? I hate hearing this healthy person died. What is your definition of healthy? What were the requirements that they considered that person was healthy and that person was unhealthy? Because I would say if anyone died from a flu virus, they were unhealthy. And this is a regular flu virus. We're seeing, what, 50, 60,000? I don't even know the new numbers, but they're very low. They are the regular flu virus numbers. Question because you do have a mother that would be if your mother in law got it and died, how would you feel? I would be very sad because um, I've lost I've lost my real mother and I've lost my real brother and I've uh, lost grandparents and I have a mother in law that is 75 and she lives here in Vegas and I would be extremely upset but you know what I would actually be very happy for her because right now her existence is not that great her husband already died um, she's 75 she has schizophrenic daughter I mean the next existence would be way better for her than this existence and we have this thing where we think people want to be on earth forever and I don't understand that for one thing go to the next dimension my mom's in the next dimension having the time of her life she hated this dimension that's why she killed herself and that hurt and that sucked but that happened and I recovered and now I know that death is not the end and so even if 50,000 60,000 people are dying whatever number those people are going to a better place because they were already sick they were already sick they were not healthy Your definition of healthy obviously is not correct because they died from a flu virus. And people that are healthy are recovering. Look at Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson. They're in their 60s, I think, and they got it, and they're doing fine singing hip-hop songs um, after they had the coronavirus. And that's just one example. There's tons of people. There's hundreds of thousands of people that recovered. DJ DJ Maz would like to know, do you want to go to the next dimension? Yes, I do, actually. Oh, my gosh, let the virus come and kill me. But unfortunately, I'm too healthy. It wouldn't. And here's the thing, I tried to kill myself three times in my past, like legitimately took the pills, passed out, and I vomited them when I was unconscious. Three times. I tried, I woke up, I was like, God damn it. Nothing is worse than waking up if you wanted to die. It's not a fun thing. You're not like, oh good, I lived. You're like, fuck. I can't even kill myself properly. This is bullshit. (laughs) And... Now I don't want to kill myself, but if I died, awesome. I'd get to go be with my mom, my brother, my grandparents. I just want Jedi Rich to come with me. Hopefully we could die together in a car wreck or something. We need more Perfect. It'd be fucking awesome. I don't know why everyone wants to live forever. I've always said, since the time I was very young, I said, I would be happy if I lived to like 40 or 50. And past that, forget it. I don't give a shit. Why do I want to be old? And I'm at 35, so... Five more years? Good. I don't care. Let me go now. I do not care. I don't know why people hold on, and a lot lot of times because they have kids, okay? They want to live for their kids. But you know what? Kids can survive without their parents, too. Mm. And I did. I did, too. And so did Jared Rich. And you know what else? I I wasn't a being in there or nothing. Yeah. (laughs) Um, As much as I miss my mom, and I, I wish she was here at times, you know, like I miss her. I wish I could talk to her. I wish I could touch her. I wish I could see her. But her being on this earth was not the sure, best sure, for sure. her or for me. Like, you look a lot younger, though. Because she had issues. She was very depressed, and she was very needy. And the, the biggest reason she killed herself is because I left. I went into the Air Force, and she was obsessed with me. Like, her whole life, like, it was... She doted on me because she was depressed, and some parents will do that. They... My dad left her, cheated on her, and then she just focused well, on me her whole life. And so is, is she put depressed. all of her well, depressed, neediness. Well, yeah. depressed people put all of their emphasis on whatever makes them feel better. Right, and it was me, so it was just constant, not, like... Just that constant, like, um, like when I was went into the basic training, I would get five letters a day from my mom. Like, they made fun of me. They were like, I don't know what's wrong with your mom. Uh, she needs to stop writing you letters. She, and I wasn't even allowed to read them. 
I would just get them. You didn't even give it time to read. And so it would just be like, they'd be like, hey, uh, Trainee Kirkpatrick, another letter from your mother. Trainee Kirkpatrick, another letter from your mother. And I'm like, oh, God, it got so embarrassing. She would, that would be like, some days it'd be like 10 letters a day. She was a little bit psycho like that. <laughs> um, but she was a great... Okay, here, here you go. Here, here, so here's here the point. Here's so another misconception now. Now I'm throwing out other numbers. This misuse of statistics. They're saying the seasonal flu only killed 56,000 people the whole year, but this virus has killed 60,000 in two months. Oh, well, that's not true. For one thing, this no, no, virus... No, that, it's all true, but what they're looking at is they don't realize is that the seasonal flu... Is only two months long, so it's the same right? Time. Right, but what? But also, everyone is forgetting that this has been going on uh, now since November. So they're taking those numbers from November. So it's actually been quite a few months. These numbers that they're saying for the coronavirus, they now realize people had it. So they've been backtracking the numbers. So this has not just been for a month. These numbers are actually they're backtracking some of them now for, since November 2019. They're finding some cases that people had coronavirus right, back in November. So right. they're going backwards. So no, it's not just this month right. the numbers if anything they're adding on extra months because they're finding out oh this person had coronavirus we just weren't doing the testing but it turns out they did um and that's happening that's why a lot of people are not getting the virus the because they already is, had yeah, it. it it's been two months but it's topped out it's topped out yeah and 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 the fact is now what's going to happen though it's going to be very difficult because they're moving the focus on the actual numbers and focusing on the recovery. And if you try to find the actual numbers, they're going to be skewed. It's kind of over. You had to kind of catch up when it's happening. Yeah, like it, we're kind of now um, just they're trying to play catch up and they're trying to, they really want the numbers to be higher because first they said they were going to be higher and now that's not true. And so the government's like, oh, and they're trying to say, oh, it's because we did all these great quarantines. We did a horrible quarantine, you guys. What we did is we said some people go to work, other people don't go to work, kids don't go to school but everyone congregate at the grocery store <laughs> and have the same delivery drivers delivering you all the yeah, same yeah. stuff too so if like one of those delivery drivers got the covid virus they would have delivered it in being amazon being ups being the post office whatever delivery service you're using be uh, if you're getting from the grocery store if people are getting all kinds of deliveries weed whatever if one of those person people had it and didn't realize delivered all day long all day long it would have spread so um if it was that deadly and if it was that uh contagious so you can't say that the um quarantines helped because they also have realized that in countries when they see um they look at the numbers and they say how many were affected and how was the uh quarantine steps that they took and they're finding that it doesn't play any factor whether now, they had yeah. extreme precautions um or none it was like the numbers don't play any factor of like oh wow where they oh, did extreme things we have less numbers if anything they're seeing like the oh, you know what? Here's a good. Now, now, really, this is what we should be. Because see, they're now just talking about numbers. We were talking about numbers two weeks ago. Right. Okay. Now they're kind of all, oh, but this and that. Now, what the thing someone just brought up is wait until they have to pay back the stimulus check. It's kind of a joke, but right. What's gonna happen? Okay. Well, here's what's months? wrong, you guys, about this. Excuse me. Domino effect. Domino. <laughs> Excuse me. I did a bong hit before I come over. But when I do a bong hit, sometimes they have these, like, after coughs that come, like, <laughs> like an hour later, you're like, ah, oh. okay. Um, so, the problem with this stimulus check thing is all they did was just print new money, which the problem with that is we're already trillions of dollars in debt as a, a country, so now we're even more, which you go, who cares about the debt? But the problem is when you just put money out there that doesn't have like our money's not backed on anything anymore it's not backed on gold or anything it's just it's just funny money but you put it out there that can create a ripple effect of issues because you can't just add billions of dollars and just like it, it creates issues you guys um it's and not like getting it, it's like people think like, oh, they think, oh, what's the issue? We have more money. Well, but they think that when the government says, here's two trillion, and say, well, where'd that come from? They said, well, we're going to borrow it. It's different than when you borrow the money from a bank, but that's right. what they make it sound like. Because the United States government, when they say we're giving you two trillion dollars, they just issue it. Well, and the problem with so the fact that... So it disrupts the whole economy, is my point. Right, it disrupts the whole, disrupts the whole economy. And the other thing is, you guys, our money now is not based on anything, which is kind of scary because at any point, it could 
be devalued and it has no gold backing your money is nothing it's just a piece of paper and that's scary the further and further we move from the gold standard right, like your money means nothing it's a piece of paper at any point they can say a hundred dollars now basically has the value of one dollar like just depending on how the economy is it's like those uh what, what's good because because there's no basis it basically everyone just believes it yeah everyone believes like the way it pyramid scheme works. but at any point our money could go down to where a dollar is a uh, hundred dollars basically worth a dollar that's what happens with especially when you go with other countries if we're trading ours could go way down those could go up you know um and so when you no longer have uh, gold behind it that's very scary and the more and more we get in debt the further we get from the gold standard so our money is just paper um and most of the time it's not even paper it's mostly electronic nothing like right, the stock market the, oh you're allowed to uh, to trade four times what you really have that's funny fake error money right, you know they're, what they're, I mean they're thinking that they're going to move everything to digital currency pretty soon right and the only digital currency I would actually trust would be that bitcoin um, if because that one actually has nothing to do with our government that one scares the government um, because if bitcoin could be something that people could use Use more, then you could get rid of these fucking banks, and they're scared of that. Um, I don't know if you guys read Bitcoin. We don't do it anymore, but we had a bunch back in the day. We were using it for ads and stuff. They were able to uh, use Bitcoin for one of the ads, and um, that is an interesting thing because there's no like people don't exist it's just you know these numbers so the bank doesn't want that because they want to be on people's ass they want to be uh, you know um, making sure everyone's uh, toeing the line and stuff and so the digital currency scares the government a lot yeah yeah but um anyways crazy times so the reason why uh, I actually woke up pretty upset because yesterday I found out well I think it was two days ago probably I found out that Governor says like was planning on extending this further but then yesterday I found out that it was till May 15 and I just feel really frustrated because I feel like people are just not believing the truth and that really frustrates me because the more people like realize that our government is fucking with us then we can have change but while everyone st sits there and believes that the government has your best interest and that governor Sislek is doing this for our health as he allows construction to continue and same with if you're not in nevada if you have a democratic governor they're all doing these extreme measures but nevada i think is the worst and it's because it's political you guys at the bottom line you have to realize this is political i am not a political person i'd rather stay out of politics but unfortunately governor sislik made this about politics so now well, i have to talk about politics i don't think it's even even his it, what it is i think you can nail it on the head okay if you were biden and you needed governors that you could convince to shut down their entire, fuck up their state, mm -hmm. to disrupt Trump. Well, Steve Sislak, I mean, does he appear to be the brightest guy in the world? Do you no. I mean, is he going to defend? Is he going to defend us? No, he's, he doesn't seem to be bright. Yeah. At all. So I think I think what happened was is just like. It was like he's kind of an easy target. What's happening is, if you guys are not realizing when you say, how is this political? Um, if we keep forgetting that, that Democrats just tried to impeach the president just a couple months ago, and then we also forget that President Trump um, imposed a 25% tax on China, and then we also forget that he bombed Iran. All these things happened really quick right before this COVID thing. And then we forgot about all three of those huge things. Those were huge. I don't know if you guys were alive or remember when they were trying to impeach Clinton. That was huge. That was in the news nonstop. I was a child and all I remember is hearing about how Clinton got a blowjob. I didn't even know what a blowjob was until they told me because our president had gotten one. And it all, I'd be all, la, 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 all this nonsense for getting damn blowjob. But anyways... Um, we heard about it nonstop. They just tried to impeach Trump, and we act like that didn't even happen. We don't even hear about it. Um, and now the Dems are acting like they're, uh, oh, uh, oh no, we didn't just try to impeach the president. Everything's all hunky dory. Yeah, right. You guys are freaking out because you just tried to impeach the president. It didn't work. So now they want to take him out. And the biggest reason why they want a Democrat in the next term, but beyond why they always want one, but th this why this year is so important is... Good point. Yeah. 
Someone says, someone says, someone says, you're not, you're not political, but you always talk politics. Only this month, or this the last 45 days, believe me, I, I did not before. No, Jay, Jay Vaughn. I did not. I, I know all these blogs are political because well, Governor Sislik like, made way, this. The political. one you to say, they always say, is I haven't told you, but they're saying he was impeached. He just wasn't removed. But everyone knows what you mean. They keep saying he was impeached. He wasn't because like technically he was impeached, but not enough to remove him. So they're making these. Okay, well then, just still. The, just give me the thing. They're, okay, well I'm saying still they just impeached our person, then and he didn't get removed. Do you see where that's like a big deal, and we're acting like that didn't just happen because all anyone is talking about is the COVID? Well, here's the thing: the next term president is most likely going to get to a point. A Supreme Court judge because there's a good chance one of those Supreme Court judges is going to die and the next time they're getting very old and the one um, Judge Ginsburg has been very ill for a while she's been in and out of cancer remission they keep thinking that she's going to die like she'll get close to her deathbed and then she recovers and they're like oh good she made it but they feel like you know that's not going to keep happening eventually you know she doesn't have that much longer to go they're thinking so the way you get a new Supreme Court judge is if one dies that's the only way so if a Republican gets to appoint a Supreme Court judge, then the Republicans will have the majority of the Supreme Court and Congress, which would mean any law they want passed can go through, and vice versa, any law they don't want passed can't go through. So if a Republican, now, if they get a Republican judge and they have the majority of Congress, even if you have a Democratic president, that president won't be able to do shit because everything he'll try to pass will get denied in Congress and Supreme Court um, if it's not something the Republicans want. So that is extremely scary to the Democrats, and that could go on for a long time because the Supreme Court spots you can't uh, refill until someone dies, and then I don't know about Congress uh, if it, how often that it could change, but you know they don't want to bank on that. So this is scary for the Democrats if a Republican um, is an often and especially Trump because they don't particularly like him and he's um, such a fireball about things so they they don't know who he would elect for a Supreme Court judge so that's even scarier for most of these Democrats they do not want it to be Trump because he would get to appoint the judge and he might even get to do that if they die before the elections and that's why they wanted to impeach him, too, because they thought she was actually very ill, I guess, just recently. So people were getting very worried. Um, and then um, so this is extremely important. People go, oh, well, so then why would they make up this virus or whatever? They didn't make up a virus. There was first it started in China. They uh, they made up the hoax. There was a virus. There's always a flu virus every single year and it lasts for a couple months and around 50,000 people die in the U.S. around 650,000 worldwide um, that happens every year we just don't normally track it on social media this is the only difference you guys we tracked it on social media and then we shut down the world that is the only difference from every other year next year we could track another virus and we could call it the uh, Bud Light virus <laughs> I'm just kidding is that funny? Did you guys hear that Corona lost sales due to this uh, thing? Super hearts. Uh, which I, I was like, super oh my hearts. gosh, thank you for the super hearts. Who is ever giving those? It's a thigh 18. Thigh 18. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so get this. People's Corona beer lost like billions of dollars because people thought it was connected with the beer or something. Like they point got it. Oh, I better not get Corona because it's the coronavirus. Like I guess this, in, right away people were like they lost so many sales in beer. Like before the shutdown, this was like just as soon as people heard Corona, then they didn't want Corona beer. Isn't that funny? I thought that was hilarious. I thought, oh, gee. wow. If you think. You Okay. Anyways, but uh, that's funny. I guess they thought the virus came from the beer. So, um, yeah, you, next year you could track a similar virus. And we could have the, the Bud Light, Budweiser, whatever you guys want, um, virus. And you're going to see the same numbers. And that's why I'm frustrated because... I get people died, and it sucks when people die. That's why I bring up about my mom dying. It sucks. I mean, I was freaking wreck for years. Um, I, I'm just, I mean, that was now, what, 15 years ago. So now I can talk about it calmly and, you know, and, but for a long time I was a wreck so I know it's sex losing loved ones but that doesn't mean that we can shut down the world for one thing <laughs> you got 
nothing shut down when my mother killed herself. I still was in the Air Force and went right back to work and was flying. Um, like, within two weeks. They gave me two weeks off, and then after that, it was like, don't talk about it again, you're back to work. And I went back to work, and that's what most people do when they lose a loved one. Unfortunately, most jobs give you about two weeks. When my brother died, my job gave me two weeks, and then I was back to work. I was working real estate then. And that was it and that sucks and you're and it's hard going back to work and you get you want to cry every time anyone says they say anything it's deadly because people are dying no that's not this is not what deadly means you guys people always die from every illness or virus or even common cold people die every year does that not make it deadly deadly would imply that it is killing more people than that are recovering. That would be just a regular virus if more people are recovering than dying. Do you see where the difference is? Just because someone dies does not make something deadly. I know you can technically say, oh, they died. No, but that's that's not that. When they say it's a deadly virus, they it's supposed to mean that when you get it, you're most likely going to die. And that's not what this is. They are seeing massive numbers of people are recovering. They're only seeing the very ill dying. And they'll say, once in a while, you'll say, here's some story. They say, some healthy 17-year-old. For one thing, I would like to see the medical history of that person. I'd like to see what they are consuming on a daily basis to determine that they are healthy. Because I would say, if this respiratory virus killed them, then they probably had some sort of immune deficiency or respiratory issue already. That's where some people that might be younger are dying because this one attacks the respiratory more than, like, it's not a flu where you throw up or get diarrhea. It's a flu where you get a really really bad cold and you can't breathe because you're coughing so much um it, to where you can't breathe so it's respiratory so people with respiratory problems which could be 17 years old could be any age especially if they start smoking um and young people smoke so i'd like to i'd like to know the history before i just believe that a healthy person died because from what the doctors are saying um the real doctors not the don't listen to the media doctors Talk to real doctors. I'm sure you all know doctors that you can go talk to. Not the hysteria ones. If any of your doctor that you're talking to doesn't believe weed is beneficial, then that's not the right doctor. So if you're talking to a doctor, ask him first, do you think weed is good for everyone? Ask him that question. If he says no, then don't listen to that doctor anymore because that doctor doesn't know what he's talking about because right there is the definitive line of uh, a doctor that is advanced in medicine and a doctor who is behind because right now we have medical doctors showing that weed is one of the most beneficial things for people. So if any medical doctor believes that's not true, then he is living in the dark ages. So right there, ask your doctor, and then if the answer is no, that weed is not good, then don't listen to that doctor. Go to the next guy. And the next doctor, if he says, oh, yes, weed is beneficial for people, then you can ask him a valid question. But any doctor right there that says weed is not beneficial already is living in the dark ages. He is not advancing in medicine or science because we have so many doctors now saying weed is is absolutely beneficial. We have 33 states, or maybe even more now, last I knew it was 33, that have made it legal. Um, and so if your doctor is in any way saying weed is harmful, the doctor, I'm sorry, is in the dark ages. And he uh, is only talking about stuff that he learned in school 20 years ago. So he is not advancing his own medical uh, profession. Thanks for the medical bus. And that's where I, I make the line. I've, I've had, um, I have a medical weed doctor, and I would ask him about this virus, and I would take his opinion. I would not take the opinion of these other doctors that try to say weed is not good and are giving all these pharmaceuticals, which, you guys, people get sick, people OD, people are so addicted to pharmaceuticals, and doctors give them out like crazy, and they won't give weed that has no side effects. The worst thing that happens from weed is you get tired. And maybe you get the munchies if you don't realize that that's only because weed's trying to tell you to eat healthy. People get the munchies because weed's trying to tell them to eat 
regular food because they're probably eating a bunch of junk food. But instead, they go right for the junk food instead of going for the healthy options. But if you went and you chose healthy options, you wouldn't get the munchies. So they blame it on the weed. But really, weed's saying, hey, you're hungry because you're undernourished. You can be obese and be undernourished because you're not getting the proper nutrients even though you're eating so much. So when you smoke weed, it'll say, you're undernourished. So you go, oh, I'm so hungry. You're, you're hungry for real food, like real organics. And people still are not understanding what I mean by organics. Um, I, I speak with people in person all the time, and they still think organics means vegan of some level or vegetarian. They say, oh, make sure to eat meat, you know, or uh, make sure, <laughs> what did this guy tell me? Make sure since you're not eating meat, to get to drink a lot of milk. I said, all I eat is meat. <laughs> um, he said, oh, I thought you were organic. I said, yes. He said, oh, I thought that means you don't eat meat. I said, no, that's vegan. Like People do not understand those are two very different things. And vegan, I do not agree with. I was vegan for 12 years, and now I do not agree with that because it is not a healthy diet for you. You will get fatter than any other diet because it's too much sugar in that diet. Any of the meat um, alternatives are too high in sugar, and your body doesn't know what they are anyway, so it's going to process too much insulin because it's going to think it's sugar whether it is or not. But even when you just look at the protein to sugar ratio is too high on all of the meat alternatives versus regular meat is... The protein is um, at whatever number, and the sugar is always zero with meat. Carbs are zero with regular, real animal meat. But organics just means what it truly means. See, this is where you got to be careful too, because if you just look at organics at the store, what organics truly is supposed to mean is food that has not been tainted by um, any steroids, hormones, genetically modifying anything, which is GMOs, flavorings, additives. Um, pesticides, all these things that they're adding to, to the foods, uh, flavorings. It's supposed to be free of all of that. Now, that is the idea of organic is food from Earth. Now, what happens is they can really stretch the definition of organic because technically you can say, technically this thing doesn't have these additives and technically this thing doesn't have this and technically this bag of popcorn is organic. But what you wanna think of organic is not things that you had to then um, change, like add things to it. Like think of what you could have in nature. Does that make sense? Like you couldn't have popcorn in nature. Um, well, someone says that pot kills brain cells and that's a fact. That's not a fact. That's not true at all. That is completely not factual. So I don't even have a, uh, anything to say to that other than that is not factual. So you need to educate yourself. And there are 33 states that have made weed legal because they know that is not true. So that's all I got to say there. So you're just retarded if you believe that. Uh, you know, and and if, you don't, if you don't believe what she's saying, well, take a look at her, or look at her body. I mean, mm -hmm. she's perfect health, doesn't go to the gym. Isn't all I do is smoke weed herself. all day and uh, eat organics. Yeah, and I mean, this is how I look. Can, if you can show yourself as healthier than her, if you can show a person healthier than her that's not overweight, then I think that you can say that she doesn't know what she's talking about. But until then, look at her body. Look what she's doing. She's very active and not depressed and happy. And I'm 35 years old. Some people said I look younger. I'm 35. Um, I have so much energy. I, I bounce off the ceilings just from, and I don't drink caffeine. No caffeine, no alcohol, no drugs. We don't even take vitamins. All we do is weed and organic beef, organic greens, and organic garlic, and water, and mineral water. Sparkling water, get, your, we get our minerals from the sparkling water. We really like that. Sparkling water is really good for you. Really good minerals in sparkling water. Some of them have better levels of minerals, but avoid any of those flavors. You don't want those little like limes and lemon flavored because those are the issues in that artificial stuff. So get the flavor free sparkling waters. Um, but that is what we do, and we've never felt better. I have tried every diet under the sun, and I was bulimic, I was vegan, I was vegetarian, well, I did all smoothies, people don't know what this I did the Nutribullet. They're calling you skinny. Okay, well, just so you know, calling someone skinny is like going to a person and calling them a fat cell. Well, here's the thing. First of all, she, she's just a normal human. You just yeah. haven't... Go yeah, ahead. okay, here's the thing. When you eat organics, your body shrinks because everyone right now, their body's getting bigger just due to the hormones and steroids that they're probably consuming from the animals or plants that they're giving those hormones and steroids to. So your actual body mass is getting bigger with not even just the fat part, but just 
your bones are getting larger and larger and people are getting bigger. If you watch the movies in the 70s, people were smaller. Um, the actors were smaller. We were just watching a James Bond movie. He was very small. He was about the size of Jedi Rich, and that's how people were. Now people are bigger than we've ever seen, and so they think I have an eating disorder because I am the normal size that humans were before they started messing with the food. And I wasn't this size just a couple years ago. What happens is the more you eat organics, your body starts to shrink, and you start to get rid of all that extra stuff, be it the from the hormones and steroids and the um, fats and sugars and everything of all that artificial and the caffeine and your body telling you to store fat every time you're producing the insulin from the caffeine and you're just storing more and more fat all that starts to shed off and you start to look like a real human again where you can see your all your muscles all your bones everything that's what a human body looks like that is what they do when they make a uh a statue of a human body it's someone that is lean so you can see all of their muscle tone and everything that's the ideal human body now we say that's too thin oh well that person looks anorexic because in contrast to the majority of people that are overweight or heavier due to the steroids and hormones and not because they're taking them they're consuming things that have them even if you're a vegan or vegetarian they give it to the plants they uh, want to pump up the plants and make them bigger and plump and um, brighter and shinier and last longer so they do all kinds of genetically modifying them and steroids and hormones to the plants and especially like apples they want them to be all certain color and certain size so organics you don't do that and everything's smaller you'll see even your food is smaller and you'll be smaller you'll eat less and you'll be totally satisfied we are satisfied every time we eat we are stuffed we are so stuffed and then we're not hungry again until the next meal we can even once in a while skip a meal and we'll be pretty hungry by the, the you know if we miss one but we're not dying where other people when they're addicted to sugar they have to be eating constantly otherwise they'll get lightheaded headaches all this kind of stuff that does not happen when you're not addicted to sugar um, and this is what a re- this is what everyone would look like if they ate organics. I mean, you'd be a little bit different because everyone has a little bit of their you know own. You stop smoking st- weed. Structure. If, if, they, if it turns to all genetically GMO. You know, that's a good question. It is tough because they do have some organic options for weed too, because they are starting to mess with the weed. Yes, and that will really upset me if they do, and we'd be able to tell right away. And some of them we have. Some of them are terrible. We avoid certain. Um, we only like a couple of growers that they have at the dispensaries. Most of them are just complete garbage here in Nevada. On top of it, the weed here is terrible. It's better in California. Um, but we like a couple of uh, the growers. But, yeah, they already are starting to mess with the weed, which is really unfortunate. Um, but here's the thing. Everyone would look similar to me and Jai Rich. Now, you have your own height and structure of your body, but we're saying, like, you would have... You would have um, that fat off. You would be seeing your muscle. Your, your, you know, you'd see your real form, whatever form that is. And everyone is different. Everyone has different shapes and stuff. But the, what's happened now is now people are so um, uh, their bones have gotten bigger and their muscles are bigger from the hormones and steroids from the animals or plants that they're eating, and then from the uh, GMOs and stuff that genetically modifying anything and all the sugar and also the caffeine is the big one. A lot of people are you know, getting. That's a funny thing because it's like they're heavy saying, from the caffeine. They're saying, well, weed is very dangerous, and here in Florida it's illegal, but yet in Florida they have caffeine, cigarettes, and right, right, right. And it's opiates, really, everything yeah, else. the things that are legal like cigarettes and like alcohol opiates. and opiates, but then weed is illegal. I mean, your state is out of control. Um, you know, here in Nevada, it was a felony until they made it legal. Can <laughs> no, you believe no, that two shit? Years ago. Two, well, or, a couple years ago now, but until they made it legal, it was a felony. Yeah, in Las Vegas. Yeah, people didn't know that. People came here and smoked weed all the time. It was a felony if you got caught. And then and then it went from felony to legal. Can you believe that? So um, your state eventually will make it legal, Florida, so get the fuck out of here. Um, unless they just want to be the only state that doesn't have it legal, and then you'll just be stupid because you guys will be the ones that are not getting any uh, taxes from the weed. You're going to be the poorest state. You're going to have the worst schools because... Technically, the weed money is supposed to go to the schools unless you're Governor Sisolak, then you stick it in your own fat pocket and buy yourself a private jet. But most of the states are giving the funding to the schools. Here in Nevada, I heard that's not happening, which is making me really mad. Hopefully, that changes because the funding was supposed to help the schools. But we have a terrible governor here who's greedy as fuck. And he uh, likes to showboat 
and uh, brag about how lavish it is. Well, now he has this lavish Las Vegas that's filled with zero people, and the only people that are going to be here are going to be the homeless residents, the locals. There's going to be no tourists, just homeless locals is what his state's going to be full of. So, good job, Sislek. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this legacy. And the funny thing is, he thinks he's doing it for the bigger cause for, like, his Democratic friends. Oh, let's get so-and-so in office. I don't even know who they're going for because they got a bunch of retards. And you guys, I'm not really for Trump either, but, man, look at these clowns they got going. (laughs) Biden? The guy won't stop fondling people. And then uh, Bernie was all right, but he was just, just kind of a little nutty. But he, I liked him, but he's out, I guess. And then uh, I don't even know who else they have. Um, but any ones I've heard, just oh, they're so boring. The ones I've heard talk for a second, they were too boring for me to even hear their name or whatever. I was like, oh, geez, bored already. <laughs> like when they were on some show, and like, oh, some guy running for, oh, God, so boring. Um, so I don't, I don't vote. That's what I do. I don't vote. because, And I've never voted. I was even in the Air Force for four years. I joined the Air Force at 17 right after um, 9-11. The governor is my cousin. Are mm-hmm. you retarded? Just curious. Am I retarded? No, someone said that the governor was their, re- their cousin. And I asked if they were retarded. Oh, if the governor is your cousin, then I am That's sorry the Why for you. Why are you the Dems if you're not political? Oh, because... Um, Right now, the Democrats have destroyed our lives and destroyed our livelihood. I normally would never say anything about either party. I could give two shits, but when they destroyed our livelihood in Las Vegas and we have all the casinos and hotel closed and we have, we're have we going to have the highest unemployment rate in the whole country, then yeah, I'm going to bash the Dems when they did this. This was a regular flu virus that they now are taking extreme measure. We are shut down for another 15 days, you guys, for no reason. People aren't even dying really anymore. It's like trickle deaths now because we're already over the hump. And Mr. Sisolak is not letting us open. So tell me, that is why I'm mad at the Democrats, okay? He's a Democratic governor that's taking more extreme measures than the president for no reason. While he allows construction, you can say, oh, he cares about the health of Nevada. While he allowed construction when eight workers tested positive at the Raiders Stadium and they didn't even take any precautions. And then at least five at the resort world, and they continued. Both of those projects are continuing full steam ahead with workers testing positive like crazy. And they don't even care. And Governor Sislik allows them to continue. So he does not care about the health of Nevada. He is doing this as a political stunt to try to take down Trump or to make sure a Democrat gets in office. Because they want they want people to be so mad at the Republicans. They want you to be mad that our economy tanked. And they want you to be mad at the measures of Trump that he didn't do enough. They want you to be like they're, and then hopefully you vote Democratic. That's what they want. Because our economy was going well and they were scared Trump was going to become president again, and he might still, because the stunt they're doing is not working very well. Um, but that's their goal. And that's why I have to be political because they messed with my state. We, I'm from California, but I've been in Nevada since 2013, and I like it here, and this has become my home, and it is messed up right now, and it is sad. And when I go to the Strip, I cry. I bawl my eyes out because I love the Strip. You guys might be like, who cares? It's just casinos. Well, I love the casinos, and a lot of them are not coming back. And that makes me sad because it's a beautiful place whether you gamble or not. I don't gamble, but it's beautiful. Beautiful. There was beautiful things to look at. They made these beautiful buildings. People could take amazing photos, and it was a wonderful experience. The energy is amazing on the strip, and now it's all ruined, and it won't recover for years, you guys. Okay, so um, if at all, the guy says that he's really his cousin, and he is going to report you to his retarded. Cut. Good. Please do. Because you know what? Governor's just like. Office right Governor's just like already took down my Twitter. So you go for it. He took down my Twitter because I told him to go kill himself. Oh, he cried. Oh, he cried. And he cried to his little wife. And they took down my Twitter because I said go kill his fat fuck self. So you tell him that. I don't give a shit. Your uncle, uncle, cousin, fucking retard, has destroyed Nevada. And he'll be the legacy of the worst governor ever. Ever on the planet. Well, here's the funny so you enjoy your cousin. He's a fucking moron. Here's a funny thing, though. Because she doesn't vote, you guys all think that we have a vested interest. We actually, well, I mean, 
we intentionally have no vested interest here. We're just we're observing and reporting for you guys. You're the ones who own the. Real I know. Estate. I don't vote. You own the, and you know what? You can you take down my. They take down my accounts every well, other we'll be day. Out of here tomorrow. Have we'll be out fun. Of tomorrow. They already took down this account. They take down my accounts every other fucking day. You think I give a shit? We have our own website because they took down our accounts so much that we said we'll do our own website. Check out JetIrish.com so that people couldn't take down our stuff all the time. So I don't care. Tell your fat fuck cousin that I hate him and that he's the worst governor on the fucking planet and that he destroyed Nevada and that'll be his legacy as the worst governor ever to take office. So you can enjoy that legacy because you know what? Right now, some people are on his side, but I guarantee in a month, there are not going to be very many Sislex supporters. So you're going to have fun. You might want to not say it's your cousin in about a month because once people realize what's going on, it's already protests happening in Nevada and Las Vegas. People are protesting. So your little uh, cousin... Yeah, he's going to have fun. Right now, people are living in a bubble, so they don't realize the catastrophe that's just occurred. But as soon as they wake up and come out of their shell and get out of their house and see what happened for no reason for a regular flu virus, then Governor Sislek is not going to be having a good time. Because he's going to have protests coming out his ass. He's going to have more homeless people than ever. Oh, also, guess what? It's illegal to be homeless in Las Vegas. So if everyone gets kicked out of their house like they're going to in a couple months, then they're going to get arrested for being homeless. But they probably won't arrest them because that would be too many people. They won't have enough room in the jails. So, But legally, they're supposed to arrest them if they're homeless. So they're going to be breaking the law being homeless. It's also illegal to feed pigeons in Las Vegas. All wonderful things the governor is to select is all in support of. And it's legal to kill pigeons. You can go murder pigeons here. You can, you can poison them. You can shoot them. You can do any means. You can starve them. Any means to get rid of the pigeons. But you can't feed them. That's the kind of people we're uh, hanging out with here. Those are the kind of people that run this state and this city. Do you see why we're a little irritated? I love pigeons. I feed them every day. Fucking arrest me. I don't give a shit. I've already been arrested, you guys. People think like these things scare me. I've been in jail. I had a DUI. I've had an abortion. I've had the cops come to my house when we were wasted because I called them myself. And, you know, I mean, it's like people think... I did. I called. We got a fight. I called the cops. I almost got myself arrested by calling the cops myself. <laughs> it's like it, it, these things are like, oh, you arrest you, take down your account. I've had all my accounts taken down. I've had five YouTube accounts taken down. I've had four Periscope accounts taken down. I've had four Twitter accounts taken down. Just because I speak my mind. So do you think I'm going to stop speaking my mind? <laughs> no. That's not going to happen. You can take down every account. I still have jirish.com. I don't care. I'm still going to speak my mind because it needs to be spoken because people are believing lies. And everyone wants to just go down the same thing, that this easy path of just believing what everyone is believing. I'm so tired of TikTok. I thought it was a cool app until I realized all it is is everyone copying everyone else. One person makes a video and everyone then makes the exact same video. I'm like, what? I thought this was supposed to be like you make your own stuff. I was laughing when I thought the video was a creative video until I realized it was someone copying and the same exact thing over and 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 over. And when I heard that fucking song one more time, the one that dumb little thing that everyone's doing now, whatever that fucking song in that song. Oh my God, I deleted TikTok. I can't handle that. And then I realized that is what the current normal people want they just want to just follow the leader do what everyone else is doing put on your mask put on your face shield because governor sislek said it's unsafe outside guess what yesterday we had so many kids playing outside i was so happy i was like that means no one is giving a shit anymore here they're like fuck it i'm not keeping my kids inside anymore these kids need to play they were playing they're running around they were not adhering to the six foot rule because children don't hear, adhere to that when they play and it was the most beautiful sound to hear children playing again because it has been so quiet for the last 44 days until yesterday I was like how refreshing is that there were kids running around in the grass and having fun me and Jai Rich went out late in the grass and we're going to do it again today we actually might go to the Raiders Stadium today 
because we need to get out there. They are almost done because they were allowed to just progress during this whole time, even though eight workers tested positive, which, believe you me, I want them to stay open. I want everything open. So I did not want him to shut down construction. I just think he's a hypocrite, and it's a lie if it's for our health if he allowed construction. Do you see what I mean? In no way did I want Governor Sislik to shut down more things. I want him to open things. But if you're going to shut down things, how could you leave construction open when it is not something that is absolutely necessary for our survival? Bottom line. Construction does not fit in the essential for survival. It is not healthcare. It is not supplies. It is not uh, delivery of supplies. It is building of something that I don't even know why they're building more things when we don't have any tourists. So once Governor Sislek allowed construction, I knew right away he knew it was not a deadly virus. Bottom Line. And if you tell me he thinks it a, it's a deadly virus, then he was willing to risk the workers' lives of every construction worker in Nevada, and he does not care about any of their lives. If you tell me he thought it was a deadly virus because he allowed construction, and you tell me one good reason construction has to continue when there is truly a deadly virus. Because if society was really going to be killed off, why would we need new buildings made or a stadium made? Ask yourselves that question, Mr. Cousin of Governor Sislek. I would not admit that for much longer because there are not very many people happy in Nevada at that guy. You see a little bit of like the media trying to act like some people are happy, but if you talk to the majority of Nevadans, they're fucking pissed. So I would stop admitting I'm a cousin to that fucking loser. And I use language because it's appropriate right now because what is going on is out of control. And I'm not even someone that cusses that often, but lately, those are the only words I have for what is going on. This is just out of control, you guys. And the problem is that people believe it's necessary. That is the problem. It doesn't even matter what Governor Sislek does at this point. The fact that you guys believe his actions were necessary is the issue. That is the issue. I don't even care what that retard does. He can fucking shut us down for the rest of existence. I, I mean, it's going to be tough, but we'll fucking figure it out, right? But the issue is that you all are still believing that what the government did was for our best interest. Really? For all of us to lose our jobs or a huge majority of us? Really? That was our best interest? I don't think so. I think most of us would have rather just take our chances and see if we got the flu and survived or not. But now we have no jobs. We're going to lose our houses. We owe two weeks of rent we're behind. We got our cell bill coming up we can't afford. We got we have a storage <laughs> unit that, well, I don't know, we can't pay that. They'll go keep all of our shit that we have in there. Which sucks because we have some, a couple of valuable things that don't sell. Oh, unfortunately, we'd sell them, but you can't sell that kind of stuff like some paintings um we got them on ebay they don't sell anyways so we gotta pay that otherwise they'll keep all of our shit um i had to pay my ad for work and i didn't get up in time so my ad's down um so i don't even have business coming in because we didn't make the money in time i was able to work yesterday but not in time for the, the ads down now and it takes a while for them to get it back up even though you pay they gotta review it and get it back up if you miss the time like you gotta keep it up to date every month and if you miss that window then your ad goes down and it could take a couple days before it goes back up so i can't even advertise to work and but you know what we'll make it through but the thing is you all need to realize this is not right they mess with our lives over a regular flu virus and they don't care because they have money and they have jobs the government, yeah, everyone that's making these decisions still has a job. And they think they can give people a little stimulus check and everything's going to be okay. And if you think that was enough for what they just did, then you need to wake up. Because whatever you got, 1200 2000 whatever your little stipend check was, it's nothing compared to what they just did to our economy. 
and you will be affected even if you're still working because everything is affected now we have we have done this thing that we we haven't even seen what's going to happen in a couple months because this is one of those things that it's a it's one of those where you don't see the catastrophe until like a little bit later because we're kind of like in this bubble where everything's kind of like ah it's okay and as soon as everything starts opening and people try to open their business and realize what happened with like all of these businesses it's just gonna be insane and that's when people are gonna realize what I'm saying is true but I would hope that people would realize that before that happens so maybe we could try to avoid it but it doesn't look like we're going to because no one has listened to me for the last 44 days as I've told you guys this is blown out of proportion it was a regular flu virus that they're destroying our livelihood and they keep extending because people keep believing that we are unsafe for our health they're believing that by extending that we won't spread this deadly virus it is not a deadly virus every virus kills people okay so every virus would be categorized as a deadly virus if you're saying it that way all right every single virus on the planet would be considered a deadly virus if you're categorizing it that way because it kills people but what would truly be a deadly virus would mean that more people died than recovered. That would mean like a virus comes through and man, you're probably going to die. It's so deadly. That is not what this is. Hundreds of thousands of people in the U.S. are recovering. And only 50,000 to maybe 60,000, I don't know what the new numbers came in today, have died. That means this virus has a huge recovery ratio. That means it's a virus that you can get over very easily. And only the people that were already ill are dying. That would not make it a deadly virus. That would make it a regular virus. A regular virus always kills people. Every year, every day, people die from viruses. Every single day. We just don't normally document it on social media, every single case. That's what they're doing. Every day someone dies from a virus, more than someone every day several people I don't even know the number of the die every day from viruses every day of existence now all we're doing is documenting all of those deaths and dramatizing them that's it that's all that has happened and we shut down Nevada for this is day 44 and we got 15 more days we're tacking on going to May 15 now um and I don't know what you guys are doing in your states or what countries you're in. I know a lot of the countries are already back to normal. China is totally back to normal because it was a hoax. Oh, they already found out that the China did blow out the numbers, that they, they realized that China had exaggerated the numbers from the start, which is what Trump was always saying, that it was a hoax from China, and that is true. He's coming back on that because since the country believes it's not, he had to uh, finally just say, okay, it is a real virus. You know, but for a long time he was saying it's a regular flu virus. And then now he's had to jump on it because everyone was giving him so much. Yeah, I mean, we were watching for a while. Because, you know, this guy's, you guys, this has been going on for a while. For one thing, they've been, they found out it's been going on since November, but even the media has been talking about it since like January. And they started saying, oh, Trump was not paying attention to this and blah, 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 blah. And all the, um, you know, the Dems, the, the, the shows that are more democratic were really ragging on Trump. Because, you know, most of those news channels sway one way or the other. They're not truly unbiased. And one of them is, like, Fox News is clearly Republican. CNN is clearly Democratic. And then a bunch of other ones, you know, go whichever each way. And you can figure that out pretty quick by just the way they talk. Um, and some of them are just flat out, I think, admit that. I mean, <laughs> CNN's, like, all blue, which is Democrats. Was, uh, Fox News is all red, which is Republican. You know, even their coloring. But, um... Anyways, so they started saying Trump wasn't doing anything. And then, you know, then yeah, however many, you know, it, it went on and on and they were making all this drama. We were hearing about it a little bit. And then it wasn't until um, Governor Sisolak here didn't shut everything down until March 17th. So all this was starting, all of the rumblings about it in January. And then we didn't get shut down here until March 17th. St. Patty's Day was when he shut everything down. We were out. I had all my green 
we were at Caesars and it got shut down. It was the craziest thing. It happened. We were there at Mandalay Bay when they shut down the MGM properties. Um, that was a couple days prior because MGM shut down before Caesars, and that was weird. They were shutting off all the games. It was so weird, and you were like getting escorted out of the. Oh, it's just the weirdest thing. Um, and then the same thing happened at Caesars. Just watching all the games get turned off and all the lights get turned off. It was the weirdest thing. They never close casinos. It's so weird. It was so eerie and made me sad. But um, I, I was making jobs. Like, do they even have locks on their front doors? Because, you know, casinos are open 24 hours, always, 365 days a year. So I was like, do they even have locks? I mean, they don't lock the front doors, but obviously they do. But um, I was like, that's so weird. Um, so what I'm frustrated about day in and day out is that people just keep believing that this was for our health and that we made the right steps. And this is, it's not, you guys. This was so beyond what needed to be done. For one thing, it was just a regular flu virus. And you say, oh, there's no cure. This is the biggest, oh, God, I'm like so tired of hearing there's no cure. There is no cure for viruses ever. How you get over a virus is you build an immunity to it by getting the virus. And you say, not everyone has to actually get the get it from someone else. You can inject yourself with it. And that's what the flu virus is, is they inject you with part of the flu and your body builds immunity to it. And the next time you won't get that or um, you won't ever get it if you got it. You know, if, sometimes you can avoid ever getting it if you just got the flu shot. And that's why you get the flu shot. Now, some people get sick when they get the flu shot, too, because they're actually getting the flu, but in a small dose. And that's all they're going to do next year is they're going to give a corona flu shot. And then next year, we're going to have another virus. And then the next year after that, they'll have another flu shot for that one. And that's all we're doing. And so when I hear, oh, there's no cure, and this one's doing And you know what? Bacteria have nothing to do with viruses in the sense of... <laughs> Except for that they can help you fight against viruses. But people think they want to get rid of bacteria by washing their hands incessantly and hand sanitizer. All you're doing is getting rid of your good bacteria. Because good bacteria helps you fight against sicknesses. And, um... I mean, do your normal hygiene. But the beyond that is not necessary. You didn't need to be washing your hands non-stop to where you're taking off all of the good bacteria. And then um, the other thing is these masks. If you're still wearing a mask, you just kind of tell the whole world that you believe um, everything you read, basically. Because anyone that is doing research can see that the, the numbers are coming in. This is not a deadly flu virus. So if you're wearing that mask, you're basically like, I'm a sucker for social media garbage when you're wearing that mask. The, I mean, when I see people with those now, I just am like, oh, God. You're an idiot. You're an, like, I just know you're an idiot when I see someone with a mask. And I'm sorry if you're wearing one right now. That you're an idiot. <laughs> it's cutting off the oxygen in your brain. Take it off and breathe. It really does cut off the oxygen in your brain if you're wearing those masks all the time. You guys realize that. <laughs> it's not a good idea to be wearing those all the time. It's very hard to breathe. So you're going to cause yourself problems by wearing those masks. Well, might, you might get some exercise. <sighs> breathe harder. But, um... I don't know. I'm just so frustrated. I almost didn't do a blog because I'm so frustrated. Like, when I heard that Governor Sussex extended it, and then what else did I hear? Oh, I was just like, oh, God. I heard another thing today. You know, I can't remember, but I was just like, it's just thing after thing. I'm just, you're just like, what is wrong with people? Um, they just believe the stupidest things. And you guys, it's not that you have, and you go, well, well, why should I believe you? I'm not saying to believe me. I'm saying to go educate yourselves. Read about the actual statistics and the scientific things and the medical real things. of not like some quack doctor that's getting on TV talking about it. Any doctor on TV, I don't listen to anyways because what are they doing on TV and why are they not actually doing their medical career? They're obviously someone that wants to be a celebrity doctor. Well, a celebrity doctor is not a very good doctor, in my uh, opinion, because that's someone that wants to be a star. They're not that worried about people's health. They want to be famous if they're on TV. Any doctor that's on TV, they want to be on TV more than be a doctor. A real doctor wants to be with his patients. They want nothing to do with TV. And I worked for doctors. I opened a, a knee injection clinic with these two doctors. They hired me as their only employee to open a knee injection clinic in... Um, Portland, Oregon, 
Um, it was called Reflex. I think it's still open. Um, and they, what it was is instead of knee surgery, you get this. You, it was called Uflexa. It's um, hyaluronic acid. It, it, it coats. You have hyaluronic acid in your knee, but as you get older, or you get arthritis or something, that um, it starts to go away, and that's what coats your knee so that it doesn't rub bone on bone. And, um, you know, the osteoporosis and arthritis and all that, then you get the bone on bone. Well, this shot would help lubricate your knee so that you wouldn't have to get knee surgery. And so I worked directly with these doctors. I did medical billing. Um, I helped them open the clinic, so I did all the we research for getting all the medical stuff, and it was just me and the two doctors. They were two... Um, ER uh, surgical doctors in um, they worked in Portland and Oregon and then they did this clinic as their second job they were both full time ER doctors so I'd only have one doctor at a time usually um, another one would be working at the ER and I learned a lot from them and um, you know the thing is I also learned that they didn't know as much as I thought about certain things just because they had a PhD did not make them an expert on everything. <laughs> and people have this tendency to want to think, oh, just because the doctor, I believe everything. Because I got in a lot of arguments with these doctors and they had to admit I was right a lot of times after a long time, I'm telling you, it was like not easy to convince a doctor that he's wrong. But I had the facts of things because I was, you know, running the office and it would be, I would just be pulling out my teeth trying to, they, they did not, ever want to admit they were wrong but they often were and everyone is human and everyone makes mistakes and doctors are wrong and this concept that your doctor could not be wrong or that if a doctor said it it must be right is absolutely ridiculous because you have contrary opinions for everything so how is every doctor right if one doctor will say one thing and one doctor will say completely contrary that means not every doctor is right right there alone so really Figure out who you are listening to, even it be a doctor or a scientist or whatever it may be. You need to make sure what they're saying lines up with the truth. And the way you find that out is by doing the research yourself. Don't ever just take what someone said and run with it and let that be what you base your complete opinion on. You need to yourself go say, what did that person say? Okay, they were talking about this particular thing. Let me educate myself on this particular topic. Be it diet, when I was like, caffeine let me go read what caffeine does to my body that is how i figured out that the issue with caffeine is that your body um when you do it this is what it does i read about caffeine i read it all the medical and scientific things caffeine is a suppressant it dulls your senses so what it does is it makes you feel not as tired and not as hungry but it doesn't actually make you less hungry or less tired but it everything kind of goes like in the dormant mode so you're like oh I don't feel as hungry because all of your hormones are not working as efficiently but what happens when you do that is one of your hormones that you don't want that to happen to is your insulin hormone so what happens your insulin regulates your blood sugar well if you uh, slow down your insulin regulator, that hormone, then your blood sugar is gonna rise. So what happens when you drink caffeine is you tell that insulin hormone to chill out. Well, then your blood sugar rises. So then your body says produce more insulin every time your blood sugar rises. Well, so then you produce more insulin and then when the caffeine wears off, you still had that insulin that'll start producing more. So now you have double whammy insulin. The problem with insulin is insulin tells your body to store fat and to then go into like hibernation dormant mode. So not only is the caffeine telling you to chill, now you have insulin telling you to chill. So at the end of the day, the caffeine is making you more tired and gain more weight because it keeps telling your body to store fat even if you're not eating. So every time you do eat, or even if you don't eat, your body's gonna be trying to hold on to all of that fat. Like it's storing the fat, it's not letting it go, it's not uh, burning it off, it's storing it. So every time you have your cup of coffee that you think I'm gonna skip breakfast and have a cup of coffee, all you did was you tell your body to chill and store fat and be tired. And then wait till that cup of coffee wears off and then you're gonna have even more problems. And I found that out by reading what caffeine does. And I go, oh, that makes sense. Because I couldn't figure out why caffeine was the thing making me gain weight. It didn't make sense to me. And I kept hearing, well, the insulin. But I said, well, it doesn't make sense because there's no sugar. But your blood sugar rises. See, if you stop insulin production, your blood sugar rises even if you are not consuming any sugar. Does that make sense? Because if your insulin isn't producing to the level it was, 
your blood sugar will rise. So I read about that. I thought, oh, that makes sense, finally. Because I figured out by just trial and error of, like, we are trying, cutting things out. So we cut out, um, we do all organics, no dairy, no gluten, no GMOs, no artificial anything, no caffeine or alcohol. And we uh, stumbled on these things, you know, one thing at a time. And the last to go, of course, was the caffeine. And I didn't want to let it go because I love coffee and I love, we were doing energy drinks, tea, uh, coffee, everything, you know, any kind of, anything with caffeine, five hour energy, give that to me. I mean, I was anything with caffeine. I was caffeine aholic. And I couldn't figure out why I kept putting on the weight. Now people go, oh, you're so thin now. I stopped caffeine in 2018, and um, I was very, he- I was heavy for me in 2018. Um, not heavy compared, you know, to some people, but for my, because I've always had eating disorders, so I was the heaviest I've ever been in 2018, which it was about, okay, I'm about 110 pounds now. I want to say I was about 140, 150 pounds. So a good, you know, out of. 30, 40 pounds to me right now. That's what I was right before I stopped caffeine. And once I stopped caffeine, pounds just started dropping. And now people say, oh, you're too skinny, you're too skinny. I'm like, I don't, this is what happens when you don't drink caffeine and eat organics. So I can tell you, I mean, sometimes I'm even like, I wish I could gain a little weight, but like, I'd have to eat things that I don't, that aren't good for me. And then they make me sick. So I'm like, I don't know. That's just the way it is. Like, cause we've tried to add other things and then we get sick. Huh, Jared, that's so true. Yeah. Like we tried almond butter. We've tried almonds. We've tried fruit. Like we'll add more. And then we just, we end up just feeling sick. We're like, we just don't feel as good as when we're doing um, our diet this way, but it just keeps us really lean. And uh, at times I'm like, yeah, I could add a couple more pounds, but then I'd have to get sick in order to do that. Does that make sense? Because when you eat the way we do, um, everything is so efficient that the second you try something that you used to like, you'll immediately say, oh gosh, I can see how that instantly made me not feel good. And that's what happens when you break it down to the bare minimums. Then you add in one thing, you're like, gosh, I ate this one thing and now I just feel like crap when I've been feeling amazing. And that's what happens with us. And we we do that once in a while. We'll try other things, but we just eat um, primarily, um, unless we're trying other things, like I said, once in a while, if we're like, "Let's, let's do this, then we always regret it. But we do organic beef, organic greens, and organic garlic, and we only drink water. And we've only drank water since March 2018. March 24, 2018, I know that day because it was my birthday. It was the last time we drank any beverage other than water, and we drank tea at that time. And that's when we cut out caffeine and any beverages. Beverages are the other thing that's giving you just um, so many uh, issues because the thing with beverages is they go right into your bloodstream. So you're not using any energy to um, digest them. So all of those calories, all of that sugar, right instant into your bloodstream. And so if you don't immediately use that, it's going to be stored as fat. So whereas even if you had eaten maybe an apple or something, you had to chew it. Once you put that in a smoothie, you made it instant, easy, no energy. So it's just all those calories stored as fat. That's why beverages are not a good idea. It's always better to chew and allow digestion to occur. The best thing to do is drink water. Water is what you need. We're made up of 80% water, and most people are very dehydrated on a daily basis, especially if they're consuming juices and um, alcohol and caffeine or any of the uh, any of those. Um, because all of those things dehydrate you on top of the other things they do. So anytime you have anything other than water, you're supposed to then compensate with like at least two glasses of water or more, depending on how much caffeine is in the thing. And people don't do that either. So they're constantly being dehydrated, which also causes a lot of sicknesses. The water is your best medicine. It can heal so many things. So many things you don't realize are actually coming from just probably not having enough water, like headaches and nausea and aches and pains. Like you get side aches if you don't have enough water. If you try to exercise and you didn't drink enough water, you'll get those side aches. Um, and, you know, all those, all those aches you get, that's usually if you didn't have enough water. So I know it doesn't sound fun. Like, people go, they want to eat all these things, all these different things, and they want to be able to have all these beverages. But it's like either do you want the, the fun and then feeling like crap, or do you want to eat right and feel great? 
and not maybe have as many options. But really, the funny thing is once you eat the way we do, you don't even want those options. You only want those options when you're eating the sugary options. The sugary options want you to eat more sugar. That's the thing. Sugar is addictive. It's one of the most addictive substances on the planet because it is the only one that we need for survival, but in um, high doses can kill us. Whereas other things that are really addictive, we could just avoid. You know, people could avoid alcohol, people could avoid heroin, people could avoid things that are like really addictive. But sugar, they need for survival, but in high doses, it, it's lethal. And it's usually lethal over a long term. It's not like people drop dead usually, it's they start getting more and more conditions. Uh, usually diabetes, cancer, candida overgrowth, diseases. Sugar feeds most of the diseases that we have, and it feeds cancer. If you cut out sugar, you can cure your cancer. That's the funny thing. If you don't eat sugar, cancer can't survive. It's as simple as that. Cancer lives off of sugar. So if you cut back on your sugar, your cancer will subside. And unfortunately, they give most people with cancer, sugar diets. It's the most insane thing. They give that to Jedi Rich's dad. They put him on an all sugar diet and he died within four years of getting cancer. And it spread like wildfire. They put him on chemo and an all sugar diet and it, just, he, it went from being a healthy guy. He went in, he had some throat problems. He just throat was hurt and he goes in um, and within four years, dead. Um, I mean, they were hiking and everything. They were, you know, in shape. They were doing all kinds of stuff. And they put him on all sugar. And right before he died, the last thing, he was never had been a guy like into nutrition or anything. But he, the funny thing, he said that Jabber right before he died, he said, avoid gluten. He just said that. It was like in his moment of clarity right before he died. And Jabber saw that. It was very strange. And he told me, and we didn't think much of it for a long time. Um, and then once I started uh, trying to get over my bulimia, I looked into gluten, and that was the first thing we cut out. I was like, whoa, he's right. I figured his dying words, I needed to take that advice. And so we finally cut out gluten, and that was the first thing to go, and then everything else came afterwards. But you'll notice right away if you cut out gluten. And don't go for gluten-free options. It's still just the same issue. you got to avoid the gluteny, gluey things. Gluten is a... Um, is a wheat protein or rye or spelt protein it's or, or oats it's a it's just a protein they made from those things but it's a very um gluey in a sense substance because it's what the pasta e bready you know um i like to think of it as glue glue and glue and you want to avoid things like that because that's what's going to stick to your insides too like think of if it's that hard to get down your throat it's going to be just that way on your inside. So when I say you want to eat things that are hard to eat, you want things that are hard to die, to, um, to chew, like steak. But then you want it to be something that can go down good, like chew it enough and it'll go down in your system good. Not something where no matter how much you chew, it's still just gluey and icky, like pastas and breadies and stuff. You know, those still get stuck. Those become very hard to digest. Where, um, but you do want to chew things. So, like things like steak is fantastic because you can chew and chew and chew and chew, you know. And then that's getting your digestive going, and that's already starting to burn the calories and stuff. That's why when you take a beverage, you're not having any of that happen. So it's just instant into your bloodstream, and then any excess gets stored as fat. So beverages are are what are causing a lot of. Um, uh, issues with people because they kind of think beverages are kind of free a lot of people think like oh, beverages don't count which is the opposite you know they'll feel fine having a smoothie they'll think like a smoothie is healthy for them and smoothie you know I would almost recommend it's funny we've teased about this it's like uh, most fruit smoothies have more sugar than milkshakes by the time you add all of the fruit and stuff like it's crazy people think they're being healthy and it's actually more sugar more calories more issues than a milkshake because um except for the milkshake is dairy but if you do one of those non-dairy ones because the thing is fruit is okay in small doses that's where everyone has it wrong tiny doses of fruit it's very high in sugar they say always oh, got all these great antioxidants in very small doses like eat like three berries in the morning and half a banana that's it not take a bowl and blend it in a smoothie and then drink a couple of those a day it's way too much sugar way too much sugar even if it's coming from fruit way too high in sugar all right guys i'm gonna jump off here i think Jerry rich just got in the bathroom we're gonna head to the raider stadium this morning so i'll catch you guys later thanks for hanging out
to death. I'm not impressed. I'm not amused. I'm not confused. I'm not confused. I'm a grown man business. I'm not in school. Put your hand down, youngin. This is not for you. I'm a jail, my dudes with the Kanye, yo. Your name on the marquee, your name off the payroll. Style fresh, like I'm still a day, yo. And it's been like that since the day, yo. I'm more time than a Rolly or Seiko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get, get up or get out, get down. Get down. Get down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out. Check it out. Check it out.